So a left ventricular cyst device called LVAD for short, and now we're pretty much calling them VADs, we like to shorten things down to the bare minimum that we have to say. Those are mechanical devices that are implanted surgically in the body, attached to the heart, and they essentially assist the left ventricle. The left ventricle is the pumping chamber of your heart that delivers blood to your body. And so when it is weakened, and again, this is only for weakened heart failure, it, the heart enlarges as it weakens. And so this device is attached to that left ventricle and then it receives blood from the left ventricle and pumps it out to the aorta. So there are actually many types of LVADs, and, but when we typically refer to an LVAD when we're talking to a patient, we are talking about a permanent, and I use that quotation, permanent uh, device. There are temporary short-term devices that are designed only to try and save a patient from an emergent situation and are hospital-bound devices. There are intermediate-term devices that can last for a few months. Those are not used very commonly. Uh, but occasionally can be done for a patient, usually as a bridge to a transplant only. Mm -hmm. But typically when we talk about LVADs or VADs, we are mainly referring to long term. So patients that we consider for LVADs are patients with systolic weakened heart failure. Their hearts have to be somewhat enlarged because this device is going to pull blood out of the heart. And if it's too small, you can literally collapse the chamber and then that causes a new set of problems. They have to have uh, no other medical conditions that are going to shorten their lifespan. Um, typically an LVAD durability right now is somewhere projected in the three to five year range, although patients have now crossed the 10 year um, implant state in some circumstances. But typically we're looking at patients for um, an average lifespan of three to five years for an LVAD, or if we're looking at it to bridge them to a transplant, then just well enough to get to transplant. Typically, those patients getting LVADs as a bridge to transplant are healthier and have less medical problems because there are more restrictions to transplant candidates versus a person just getting an LVAD as a treatment, which is right now the terminology is used is called destination because that is their destination, it's not bridging them to something. So those patients can have a few more problems than the transplant candidate can. They also need to have a support system. They need at least one person, and we consider more is better, that will be educated on the pump and be available to help with the dressing changes and support them through this. The goal for an LVAD patient is to be as independent as absolutely possible. So at Baylor, we have a very complete advanced heart failure team that we have all specialize in the care of the advanced heart failure patient. And uh, we have a very enthusiastic LVAD team as part of that. So just like any technology, it doesn't work for everybody. And the interface of technology with human body is incredibly tricky. So these patients have to take blood thinners they have to take meticulous care of their driveline site. We have to control blood pressure. All of these are risk factors for major complications. So the ways that an LVAD fails, it's not so much, oh, the pump just doesn't work, like you got a defective pump. It's that you develop a complication of what we call the machine person interface. So the most common complications associated with an LVAD are gonna include infection, stroke, bleeding because they're on blood thinners, and clots forming in the pump. A lot of these different complications can be managed medically, and we try and do that. Mm -hmm.